Ghost of the Future, Issue 16. It starts out with a past flashback taking place in Mexico, and Sonic tells Shadow that he can't stay in here forever and should go out for a bit to take his mind off things. You'd think they would go hide in Canada, not a place where they don't know the language. The reason they're not living in America in the past is because Gun turned on Shadow, so it makes sense that they go to another country, but not that one. He says that he's really bored. Shadow sees a party and doesn't want to go, angsting about how bad his life has been. So he forces Shadow to go to the party, and he tells Shadow that they should set up memorials because he'd rather be remembered with happiness. And he's sick of Shadow beating himself up for something that isn't his fault. Thankfully, Shadow apologizes and says he's been selfish. He says he can't change instantly, but can start trying tonight. But he won't dance. That would have been more heartwarming, but the way he interacts with Sonic in the present, while it's not like they're enemies, they're not super close friends either. Then Sonic says they should bring Rouge and the Chaotix along next year. Back in the present, Silver says in the narration that it's been a few months with all of them living in the new Chaotix mansion. He doesn't get to see the others much. Blaze is usually training with their magic alone. You'd think she'd be great at it already and not need to. For some reason his sister's in a wheelchair when to call his healing powers. That's still stupid. Especially when they have four emeralds now. The whole reason she was having trouble healing her was because there wasn't enough emeralds in the universe, but there's more now. Silver explains that he used to wish his sister was quieter, but not now. And while Cicely was forbidden from spending time with Metal Sonic, she still does. So the people in the comic are annoying me by refusing to recognize that he's actually a good person who simply got taken over by an evil Nicole. So they're still hating him for something he was brainwashed into doing. You'd think all he'd have to do is have one conversation with all of them, and they'd understand that he's not evil anymore. But I can understand him being too reluctant to try. That's not much better than how Flynn wrote the people of Metropolis to hate Nicole for being brainwashed by the Iron Queen. But no, have only Sicily realized how stupid this is. I'd like to see a version of Shard that isn't hated by most of the characters. After Silver sees Shadow steal a candle, he says a needlessly edgy line because he's mad at some people as he goes into the kitchen, and he's nice and considerate to Blaze, and after Silver sees that his redundant younger sister was trying to complete her next year's Halloween costume, she also projects to go into her ghost form, being interested in doing that whenever it benefits her. So at least she has a special power, which puts her on the level of characters like Silver and Blaze now. But I still don't want her around, because I still have a hard time forgetting her design, annoying first impression, and the fact that Silver doesn't need to have a sister. Her ghost form is redundant with Sonic around, who's able to do the same thing she'd be able to do anyways. Silver and Blaze go outside and see Tikal, who didn't want to get in the way for months after so many mistakes. Then he thanks her for trying to heal her at the hospital anyways. Tikal thanks her for not hating her. Why isn't she trying to heal her again? They could have had this conversation months ago, but that'd be good communication skills instead of rom-com levels of why aren't these characters talking to each other? which Silver and Sonic both suffered from since issue 2. Tikal came here looking for Sonic, who's been quiet with her recently, which is cause for alarm. And yesterday he didn't show up at all. Eventually, they find Sonic and Shadow, who've learned some Spanish from when they were in Mexico. Sonic wants to have a party in remembrance of his friends, and he says he got nostalgic from seeing old photos in the new Chaotix archives. Tikal gets excited because the festival that Sonic's talking about reminds her of the festival for ancestors that her own tribe had and it was the only thing her father did that she agreed with. So they have a party and enjoy it. This whole issue has just been pointless filler. There's no plot. It's just a bunch of little scenes that have nothing to do with each other. There's nothing worth summarizing. At least the characters are nice to each other in it. 